Okay, let us pick up where we left off last week. We were looking at Schoology, developing a site inside of Schoology. So let's just go ahead and jump right in here. Uh, remember I said that the way you start a Schoology site is you start with courses. Um, and you basically click on Create. Where Schoology can be a little confusing is it does things like materials here. And then it has a thing up here that says add materials as well. You really, this is where you're going to be working. It's right in here, 99% of the time. Now over here is where, you know, you can have a grade book for students. We're not going to worry too much about setting this up because you're basically building a shell. Um, if you would like to follow up and actually implement your Schoology site, then we would have uh, we would do an independent study together, and we can then track and do a little qualitative work on how well students enjoyed it, plus doing the QM again. Badges is something fun. You can basically assign badges to people. And yeah, depending upon the grade level, although I've had people who teach high school, I have a specific one right now who teaches Algebra 2, and her high school kids love getting these things. Attendance, you can guess what that is. It keeps track of who has come in. And, of course, the members is where you can either add people or they join. I find that allowing them to have the uh, ability to self-enroll themselves is the easiest way to handle this. All right, let's get back to where we were. So here I am. I'm at add materials. What I want to do today is walk through the assignment feature of Schoology, which is probably one of the most powerful bits that Schoology has, uh, and it is the crux of everything that we do. We talked about last time that this linear creation, and this is in other words, we have a course introduction. We're following right along with the QM. We have a standards. All of this helps students understand how to find their way, although the, uh, our understanding would be in our course introductions, we would basically do all of that right here. Uh, I also showed you how to put in an uh, answer garden where you can collect crowdsource people's understanding about whatever topic you might be doing. It's a nice little, that's a nice little feature. Um, and we went over how to do it. And I'm going to show you how to do it again today. Because this is one of the ways that you can very easily use Web 2.0 uh, apps to increase the interactivity of your course. Let me pop back up here. And you know, this is, by the way, this is called um, breadcrumbs, when you see the, the links up here that allow you to jump back and forth inside of things. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at an assignment. Before I do that, um, for standards, what I would do for my standards is I basically would come in here um, and I would go find where my standards are located. Well, for this particular one, our standard is located in the ISTE. Um, and all I would do, and again, I'm looking toward the assignment, all I would have to do is just come in here, and if I have something in here already, then I need to come over to my gear, remember your gear, edit page, and now I have the ability to put anything in that I need. So I'm going to basically paste in what I just found. Uh, I'm going to go back and add some more. But you get what I'm doing here. I'm just going to locate where the standards are that I would use in my class, and I'm putting them into my Schoology course. That's all I'm doing. It's as simple as that. Um, I think sometimes we get a little worried that we need to 
um, be real fancy here. No. In fact, what you want it to be is simple, clear, so that kids, especially kids, can understand what it is that you're asking for. Now, down here, you can notice that I can individually assign, align learning objectives. Um, and I can publish t to students. Publishing to students is not a bad idea, is it? Because now you can basically say to kids, uh, this is what we wanted you to do. Excuse me, I'm going to have to stop for a second here to answer my phone. I will come right back and we will pick up where we left off. Hello. Did you just call me? I called you in the office. Okay. All right. Just make sure. What's up? Did you want to call me back? Okay. No. I'm going to talk to you. Okay. That rings a bell. Katie, she's doing the Google thing. She's uh, had her parts in here, and now I can't find them. Anyways, Kentucky Department of Ed, so she's in the digital learning. So she's in with uh, online virtual learning. But she does all the Google stuff. Mm -hmm. Yep. You're here today. Yeah. Sort of court, I cornered, I'm sorry. Anyway, told me I asked her about a test, a Google test for seventh grade. I said, I don't want a certification. Yeah, it's a test. I just want something. Yeah. And she said, that's funny that you should ask. Evidently, there's four other people that, that want one too. So she said, whoever makes it, they're going to make a lot. 
All right. So at one time we had a licensed uh, version of uh, Camtasia out there. Right. And at one time uh, I built the third grade test in Camtasia, you know, complete with voice and, and uh, and in other words, uh, watch this video. What did the video show you? You know, print, fade, all that stuff. So, yeah, I don't, of course, you know, if you own it, you still have it, who knows. But that would be the route to go. Probably because yeah. it, it was sitting on a server. Ah, yeah. So it's probably gone. Yeah, yeah. Do they keep track of uh, those kinds of, uh, you know, we had a receipt for it? Uh, would that be something Stephen would have to have? I'm saying in Kent case, your, what you had created was probably on the server. Oh, yeah, that, that, long and, that went away a long time ago. But yes, we still have Camtasia. Okay. So, remember how Sharon did it? She put together a team of lab teachers. And they essentially did redesign of the elementary one. Now, she changed her mind when it came to the high school ones, because in that one she basically just brought in, no, she had some teachers, I take that back. We had have, we have principals and teachers. So, you know, I don't know if Charis would be amenable to that, uh, or she'd have to have somebody be the lead, but she certainly would be the person who knows it all. And I, you know, it would be like, okay, so if we switch this, that'd be the thing I would worry about. So how many schools are Google? Lots. Well, but we need to know. We're getting, we're getting more. Let's put it that way. So when a kid walks into a school lab and they're supposed to create something, they're going into uh, docs and sheets and I forget what PowerPoint is called. Show? The show? What is it called in Google? I, I know. Go ahead. Which, this is really funny because I'm just gearing up here to uh, record a class about using Google Classroom, you know, for an online presence. So this is kind of in the front of my brain, which is embarrassing that I don't know what the power thing is called. And then, of course, you, you've got Google Forms, which... You don't have to be embarrassed. To try to be. No. Okay. Slides. Slides. Duh. There's, there's Duh. Slides. <laughs> and then forms. Um, so, and then of course you use uh, sheets as your database. Right. So, I, you know, would it be hard to do? No, it wouldn't be hard to do at all. But the thing that I would worry about is, do we start doing it now with the expectation of the 100% coverage, and this will be the uh, go-to for all fill in that blank from elementary schools, middle schools, high schools, everybody? Uh, it, would be, it would be middle, and then we'd have to figure out how to do 1%. Right. You know, what, what would that look like? Third's gone away, right? It's a it would be successful. The third has gone away. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Yes. That's what I'm saying to you. So you always make something in-house with... The only problem with doing it in-house, you know, I get what she's saying. You make a million dollars. I get what she's saying. But uh, anything that we made in-house, nobody else except JCPS. That was kind of Sheila's um, frustration, I guess you'd say. You know, she had all that wonderful clip material, and she couldn't do anything with it. That's right. Yeah. I, I remember more than once sitting with her, uh, and she complained. Because she knew I was over there doing similar stuff, you know, with our tests, and had similar ideas, and she would sit and talk about that. Well, we can't do anything with this. Uh, that that would be a giant, giant 
change. But it would probably be a welcome change based upon what you keep telling me about learning.com being a piece of shit. I've had other words in my mind for it today. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh. What would it be? The thing that, um, the other thing you have to think about is how does it get turned in and how do you protect it? Right? I know. That's the thing. That is the big, big thing. Can I make a grade book? Yeah. Can I make a grade book in a Google Classroom site um, that would be all fifth graders? That way, I wouldn't have to worry about um, making a site for uh, Chenoweth, making a site for Bloom, making a site for Goldsmith, you know, going that route. Right. And, and then just right. in the CSV file that I would load up, I can put in there a column that says Stevie Swan, Goldsmith, Diana Sterling, Bloom, right? And that way, when I right. they go take the test, I'll get a report and I can then sort by, you know, school. But we'd have to figure out a way to lock it down so that people who are known to cheat couldn't cheat. It to me, it should have... Oh, are you not that early? You are? You are? You are? I don't think you are. You are. You are. Did you fall into that can again? It should have more than 30 questions. It should have questions that, I mean, like, not 30 standard questions, you know? Yeah. Sort of like a blackboard thing that you have 100 yeah. issues, yeah. you know, that would fall in. Yeah. So that everybody wants to get the same. Right. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. And, hang on a sec, I've got it sitting here. Like I said, I'm getting ready to teach it. So let's go in and look. And I randomize questions that I create in a test inside of Google Classroom. And the answer is right here. The answer is yes. How about them apples? Like it, like it, like it. I'm eating a good apple right now. There you go. Okay. I always like it when you make bananas. But anyway, um, yeah, it's easy enough to do. That's the point. Okay. The hard part would be, I mean, the creation side would be easy enough to do. And, again, I think it would behoove you guys if you did it with input from the lab teachers who were recruiting classrooms. Right. And, and would you get... Would you get a pass with Shara say, if Bloom uses the Google Classroom test this year, can they get a pass on the learning.com? Yeah. All right. But see, the questions would have to line up. You know that. Oh, sure. With the standards. Sure. And you know how hard that is. Yeah. Sure do. But it's not, it's, 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 it's hard, but it's not um, it's not something you can't overcome. I understand. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you must do it. You basically sit and you, what you always want to do, always, 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 is you want to start with standards and work practice. You want to start with questions and work forward. So that's easy. Right. You know, that's easy. Um, and then once you do that, then you can basically build, you can start building that library of questions. So standard number one. Here are the questions that have to do with standard number one. We need ten, please. Right? And you, you do that with your team. And then you go to standard number two. We need ten, please. Right? And then you just keep going. Then you can then take the questions and put them through, you know, the old way that we did it, we'd run them through Word and try to see what the reading level was. Um, I don't know if that still is a Word thing. In fact, you know, 
inside of, um, unfortunately, it's a paid thing. If you're using Chrome, there's a thing in Chrome called Ginger. It's a you know add-on extension, and it is the best darn grammar spell corrector I've ever laid my eyes on because it's very predictive. But anyway, that's a that's a aside. I apologize. Keeps my stuff looking nice and clean. I'll tell you that. But it's that's a that's a big job. I mean, that would be a big job. And to me, I would have to lobby for going out and finding those really good teachers that are in Google schools and bringing a, a group in and create something and then knowing that they're good citizens in terms of test taking, that we could then literally just run the tests in, that, in those four or five schools and see how it goes over. Where do the standards come from, anyway? They're not the ISTE standards. Hold on. They're what? The ISTE standards. Honey, I got the ISTE standards right here in front of me. Yeah, and that's basically what they would come from. All right, now let's go in here and look at this. So when I look at the ISTE standards... Oh, I'm looking for educators. I'm looking for educators. Let me back up. Should we do students? Is that what we should do? Okay, so the first one is empowered learner. All right, hold on. Let me back up a level because, as I said, I'm sitting here with it in front of me. So I want to be a learner. Is that the one I want to see? For students. The empowered learner, which. Yeah, for students. I got it. All right, now let's go down here. Empowered learner. I'm here. Students leverage technology to take an active role in choosing, achieving, and demonstrating uh, competency in their learning goals. Whoa. Visual citizens and easy. That's an easy. Okay, do that one. Well, I'm just saying, to me, digital citizenship would be an easy. Because, you know, that's, right. that's what ISTE is all about. Knowledge constructors. Right. Students currently create a variety of resources. Okay, so knowledge constructors where you're your your doctor sheets, your slides would all go in. You agree? Right. Innovative designer. This would be where we did, you know, uh, uh, create a fill in the blank. Create a slide presentation with four slides about da 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 da. Because you realize if you do this inside of a, a Google course shell, you could have all the material sitting there for them to use. But they wouldn't have to go out and find things. Computational thinker, develop an employee strategy for the same song from? Sure, okay, so that's all sheets right there. That's your sheets. Creative communicator. Students communicate clearly and express themselves creatively for a variety of purposes, tools, style, formats. Eh. What do you think? Would that be a, a doc thing that we would do? And students would be, hold on, how about you? Yeah, right. Sorry. Collaborator would be tough. Sorry. No collaborator. No collaborator. Yeah. I mean, we don't do anything like that. Do you? I mean, that would assume that we have a working relationship with, say, another school or something like that. Or maybe email. I don't know. First one, Empowered Learners. Students learners technology take an active role in discussing, achieving, and demonstrating competency in the learning goals. It's born by the learning. That's a tough one right there. Two is easy. Three is easy. Four is still easy. Find is easy. So, ready? Yeah. Which of these tools provides a way to see human feedback on your work? Yes or no for each tool listed video conference? Sure. Within that global collaborator? Sure. Online collab collaborative software discussion forum? Well, all the above. 
Where's that from? Uh, the sample test. It's so great. So that's the sample test from learning.com. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's you just asked an adult here, Hug. <laughs> Who does oh, this okay. stuff? Okay. Now, if I were a kid in fifth grade who read that list to me, I would just be going, what? Because I wouldn't understand half the words. Right. I mean, that. Even if I were a sophisticated fifth grader, I still wouldn't understand half the words that you just used. So. I would, here's what I would do. I would sit and look at Google Classroom with that test and basically go through and look at each question and then see how you could answer those questions through the lens of a Google Classroom. Okay. Now, you know what Google's going to say to you, don't you? Or what they would say to you? They've got all that stuff. Have you ever looked at a Google Classroom? Have you ever actually had one created? Mm, no. Well, go in and create. Stuff. Yeah, go in and create yourself a Google Classroom. It's it's stupidly simple. Uh, you go to uh, classroom.google.com. And you probably got a you've, you've got a Gmail account, don't you, or or a Google account? I do. All right. So see, you can go in there, and that way, I'm trying to remember where it is. Here, let me catch up with you. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay because you're trying to do something, aren't you? You're trying to work. I am, but what I've got to do, I can do with my eyes closed. I really can't. Never mind. I'm not even going to go there. Well, you always were ahead of me, okay. too. You were always ahead of me. You'd be like, could you just hold off a second and then I'll come at the same time? Okay, let's see. Um, I know, I know. All right, so see, when I go in and I look at my digital citizenship one that I made, Just like in Office 365, you know, it has that little checkerboard. In the Google Classroom, there's a checkerboard up here. Uh, right next to the, uh, whatever that is. You click on it, and then all these things open up. So at this point, what do I have? I've got my account, search, maps. News, play, YouTube, Gmail, Drive, Calendar, Photos, Translate, Google Plus. Because nobody uses things. All right, keep going. I've got shopping. I've got right. wallet. I've got finance. Right. You see what I'm doing? Right, and that's that's right, and that's fine. I get it. But if you sit then and look at what does it have? But are we teaching all this in classrooms? I doubt we're teaching Google Plus. I mean, nobody uses Google Hangouts for anything. Or do you? I think they actually do yep. to collaborate with other um, schools. Mm -hmm. Now remember, this is, this is Test Design 101. Test. Okay. Always push instruction. Test. Always push instruction. And so, if you think about it, that old chestnut of we just have a reading test. And what was the reply? Maybe I'll do a better job teaching reading. Right. And that's an honest reply. That's not just being. You know, snarky. That's an honest reply. So, don't be afraid. You know, I would sit and create an outline. Just, uh, but here's how we could do standard 
one, two, three, four, five. And we've already agreed that one has a big question mark beside it. I, I don't see how we could figure out how that fits, to be honest with you. Two is an easy. Okay. Three is an easy. Four is an easy. Five is an easy. Six is an easy. Yeah, no. Well, yeah, six is an easy. That's slides. Uh, the global, and seven is hard. I don't know how you can pull off seven. Because we just don't do it. Well, there's very few places where we do it. All right. Okay, well, some, some place to start. Mm -hmm. Sure is. I would get a team together, though. Now, I, I realize you all don't do teams anymore. You know what? <laughs> I thought I'd stop the recording. This thing's been recording this entire time. So I'm going to stop it now, and I'll just erase it and start. So last week in Module 5, we started talking about how to build a Schoology course. I want to pick up this week and talk about assignments. But I also want to make an announcement. When you see this site again um, next week, I'm going to put in a Module 5A that will be about developing a Google Classroom as an online environment. In the past, we have done things like um, creating a Blackboard space. Uh, because they are uh, schools, specifically Jefferson County, that could have a blackboard space. But more and more and more across the state of Kentucky, in both the archdiocese and in public schools and in private schools, uh, schools are going more and more with the Google Classroom. So I think it behooves me to create um, and replace the module that normally we would have had for a blackboard with a Google Classroom. So. And that, of course, will be fine. Uh, pretty much we will use the same um, quality matters rubric to uh, look at our Google Classroom. So that will be next week we will talk about the Google Classroom. Right now, let me jump back into Schoology, do a quick review. Remember when you set up a Schoology course, you want to make sure you set yourself up as the teacher. You create a course by basically just creating. <laughs> um, the first things you want to think about as you're working is think about your quality matters rubric. And this is what I meant about literally having the printout of that rubric in hand as you sit here and look at how to make the parts inside of your online course. And as you can see here, I made a folder by going to Add, and then I create folders. Folders, I find, are a very familiar way for kids to understand the structure of your course. Um, Universal Design for Learning would tell us to give kids ways of understanding what folder is what. And as you can see here, I've been doing that with a uh, color scheme. If I were working in an elementary school, I would certainly want to do something with adding pictures to my folders. So I would go in like to my standards here, and I can click on either colors, or I can add pictures to it. And that way, I can say, go into the folder that has the tiger on it. Um, of course, good design would say that it would be something that kids can relate to. Now, they're not going to relate too much to standards here, but now older kids certainly would. Um, and again, for standards, what I can do uh, is I can put in ideas, excuse me, standards, just based upon what it is that I am teaching from. And as you can see here, I went through and grabbed two of the standards that have to do uh, ISTE standards that have to do with developing online material. Of course, I could probably add three or four more. But, you know, again, just a document 
It says this is what it is. But I also put something in here. It's kind of fun. I created a answer verse, excuse me, answer garden that I put in here where I'm basically asking for you to give me your ideas about whatever it is that I'm teaching. My course is about Schoology here. And you can basically write your ideas in here, and then it shows up. Um, and then that way you can basically get a sort of crowdsourcing from your students about a basic understanding of the what you're going to teach. If you think about this, this is kind of like doing a pre-assessment or trying to find out what people know. And now let's go look at how we can do assignments. Assignments can be as simple as um, here's what I need you to do, here's how to do it, and this is where you submit it. Well, the first thing, though, that I want to do is, again, keeping with that organizational theme I've got going here, I'm going to make a folder. And I'm going to call that folder assignments. And I'm going to say assignments for Schoology course. And I'm going to give it a color. And again, I'm doing this so that it's easy for everybody to see. And then I'm going to say create. So now, I've got three folders, and I've got one for uh, assignments. So I'm going to open the assignment folder, and it's simple as going in and saying add an assignment. It's just that easy. And it comes up with a form for me to fill out. Now, this form, if we look at it, allows me to say intro to Schoology. And my description is where I'm going to say, this is what I want you to do. Watch the attached video about Schoology and develop an answer to the prompt how is Schoology used in schools okay now notice I can highlight that question there and I can bold it Then I'm going to go down here, put your answer in comment, comment form. And I'll show you what that means. Yeah, you can probably already guess. All right. So I have created an assignment. I can come down here. And I can do all kinds of things. And I can uh, basically, if I need to have them work on something, I can upload it. So in other words, if you wanted to have a document that they would work on and then turn around and, and upload it back in, you could. What we're asking for is fairly simple. I'm going to ask them to um, And I went to the wrong place. I apologize. I'm going down here. I've turned on comments. And I've got grade statistics disabled. I can publish it to students, which of course I want to. I've got submissions turned on. I can lock it if I want to. Oh, and I can also individually assign it. So I've kind of gone over all the things I've got here. And now I'm going to insert my content. Sorry about that. So I can insert 
a YouTube video. And normally, I would probably have this all set to go, and I wouldn't have to do a search like I'm getting ready to do here. But I kind of know what Schoology is about, so I'm going to go ahead and grab this one. And I'm going to import it. And I'm going to embed it. That way, when it shows up in the assignment, it shows up all set and ready to go. Again, speaking to accessibility issues, speaking to universal design for learning issues, I'm putting things in that make it easy for the students to find it. And then I'm going to create. So I've created a an assignment. Oh, I forgot to tell it a category. Um, da, 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 da. I'm going to go ahead and leave it ungraded, and I'm going to do a create. Because what I would be doing with this is I would be looking for them to just leave a post. Now, if I come up here and I click on Intro to Schoology, there it is. So there's my video to watch, and there's my comment to put in. Now, if you wanted to do an assignment where they have to put in a, oops, they have to put in a file. Again, very simple to do. I can go into my assignments folder. I can come up here to add materials. I can add another assignment. This time, read the attached file. about Schoology features and create and upload a two to three paragraph response. the features you would use. Okay? And then I could put an inscription here. I can individually assign it, assign learning objectives, I can log it, suspicions enabled, Publish to students, create students. I don't need to do that one. I can enable that, and I can copy the courses, but I don't need to, obviously. So I'm going to go ahead and create that. Now, looking at this, the first thing I, well, again, I'm kind of keep throwing me back because I don't do that graded thing. As you can see, I can edit it. I own it. And when I'm in edit mode, this is where I could upload the file that I want to be a part of it, which is right here. And I could go out and find a file that they're going to read. I don't think oh, I might have one. Let's see if I can find a good file that I might have on Schoology. And I'm not going to waste your time and my time hunting for things. So let me just scroll real fast here uh, down to where my EDAP 587 materials live. And again, you know, this is, could you hand them a Word file that they have to fill in? Sure. Uh, people do that all the time. So it doesn't necessarily have to be something that is an empty file, um, or it could be a, a just a Word document that they're going to download and then complete and 
uh, re-upload. Here we go. Let's see what we've got in here. Now let me just go ahead and throw this one in here. So I'm going to put that in. And there it is. And I'm going to save the changes. Of course, it barks at me about that. That time I did have it. Okay. Okay. And bingo. There it is. It's that easy. It's that easy to create these things. Now, let's talk about class. So how many assignments do I need to have, Steve? As many as it takes for you to have a shell that introduces me to beginning use of your uh, online presence. Now, having one or two, like I've done here, eh, you know, it really doesn't get the job done that well. But you could uh, have, say, three or four that would help me understand what you're doing. You can have a discussion forum. where you can put something in like share what you know. Share your ideas about Schoology. And again, look down here. Make sure you've got everything going right. The other thing you can do, of course, is you could put in content, you could put in uh, any kind of embeddable material that you want to. That's how I got the answer garden in here. And then I'm going to hit create. Now what I have is a discussion forum. So assignment, assignment, talk it over. Let kids have a chance to and now we are hearkening back to the knowledge building principles. Give kids an opportunity to share with their uh, classmates their understandings about what they have. And when you click on it, of course, it gives you the ability to write a comment, and you realize you can write it as long as you want. Um, but see, then when I read what someone has said, then I can go back in and I can build upon their comment and so what we start developing here is that idea of knowledge building, where kids are looking at the thinking of their classmates and having um, input and learning from each other. Building a test and a quiz is probably the easiest thing to do. You know, you know what? Let me do this. Create a new grading group. There. Now I've made Schoology happy. Okay? I'm going to create. So at this point, I can decide how I want this thing to work. So I can add a question. Look at what you get. So you can see it's, I have everything in here that I could possibly use uh, for creating a quiz. So here would be where my question goes. Um, I think I accidentally hit that. Here would be where my question goes, and then down here would be my answers. And I'd be able to go in, and I can move them up and down. And I basically then choose the one that is the correct answer by hitting a little circle over here. And then when I get done, I can decide if I want to randomize it, allow partial credit, timed, all that. 
Let's let's do it real fast here, just so you see how it works. Schoology has how many features? That's a horrible question, but you're getting the idea. And I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to say it has four, it has five, it has six, it has seven, and so on. And then I'm going to come over here and click on the right answer, and then I'm going to add. Okay, now that I've done that, I can have, um, I can add more questions. That's all there is to it. And once you get everything in here, I was waiting for another answer. Fine, there. <laughs> Great question. Okay, so I now have my first question. I can add another question. And as you can see, you can have as many different ways as you can think of to have questions. So let's review. So I have a folder called Assignments for Schoology Course. I've got a, uh, a video that tells me about Schoology. I've got a file that teaches me about Schoology. I've got a place where kids can talk about what they know about Schoology. And then I have a quiz. As simple as that. Remember, everything can be edited. So I might want to go back in here and edit this title to reflect reflect how it would work within my course. So this is Assignments for Schoology course beginnings. And then I might want to then create another folder that would represent further thinking as we go along. And then I'm going to give it a color. And I'm going to create. So now I have these multiple folders that can represent multiple parts of what I'm teaching. But I am very much following the quality matters rubric with all of this. Let's take a look at how we would put something in that follows the UDL beliefs. Let's go over to Edpuzzle real fast. And let's log in to Edpuzzle. I'm a teacher. Thank you very much. And once I get in here, uh, isn't that cool? Uh, this is a student of mine, and she's already built a Edpuzzle way for her students to, she's a physics teacher, and she's, uh, they're using this to understand in physics class, how to build a uh, putt-putt golf course. That is cool. But let me go ahead and grab our old friend here. And what I want to do is I want to get the code from this so that I can bring it over into uh, our class. Now, I understand I understand. This has nothing to do with Schoology. I'm just showing you how you could do this. And that was my bad. Sorry about that. I can take something from out of Edpuzzle, like this, copy it, bring it into my Schoology site, like this, 
and let's go ahead and go in here and I'm going to create a new assignment and I'm going to call it um, UDL head puzzle. Now I'm just doing that to give you a sense. It would probably be something along the lines of understand something something. I can go over here and what I can do at this point is I can click on the link that allows me to have the ability to put in content. So I'm going to try putting in a link and let's see what it does. So I'm going to put in the link that I just took and let's see if it'll let us put it in. Text is required. Sure. I'll just say it's UDL. And let's go ahead and create it. And it didn't go in. Hmm. Well, I'm going to go find out how I can get something in that would allow us to put in content let's try it one more time down here Now that we've done it, let's go ahead and close that out. Let's create it and see what happens. Let's see what comes in. Once again, it says, hey, I need a category. So there you go. And there it is. So. I now have the ability to put in something I've created in something else. And when I watch this, if you remember from when we did uh, the, uh, this assignment, see, there's the setup that basically tells me what to look for. And then here's the formative assessment. All of this is living inside of Schoology. Now let me back up and let's go through that again so we were sure because I was kind of fumbling there and I apologize. So let's go ahead and delete that. And let's try it again. So we have this we have this Ed Puzzle video that we have created. It is about the content that we're trying to teach. And within it we have the ability to put those verbal cues in there and then put formative assessment in there. Not only does it can we do that, but if I create my own Ed Puzzle class, it will actually then keep track of what the, how the kids answer it. So I'm going to add an assignment, and I'm just going to call it Ed Puzzle Quiz, and then I'm going to come down, and I'm going to add here the link that is essentially the embed code that I got from my Edpuzzle page. And here I'm going to put UDL for my text. I'm going to make sure that I put it in the right category, which is Schoology. And I'm going to create. And as you can see, there it is so that when I click on it, it will pop up and it will let me watch the Ed Puzzle. You know, it's, it's, it's so simple. It's so, so simple to do to add things to your class that kids can participate in.
All right. I think we're going to stop here. If you have any questions that you want to throw at me about all of this, please don't hesitate because I'm going through this, I think, in a manner that makes sense that you're being able to see this sort of progression. Real fast, I'm trying to stick to my quality matters rubric. I'm trying to put things in here that allow kids to see things from multiple vantage points by the use of media and by the use of other Web 2.0 apps like uh, our friends over at Edpuzzle. Uh, I could put all kinds of things in here using that embed feature that is so easy to do. I could put in a GoAnimate. I could put in I could put in a, a voice thread. I can put in all kinds of, of things that give kids a chance to see it in other ways besides just text. All right. I'm going to go ahead and close it down. I will have this posted uh, today. And again, I apologize for the technical issues that happened uh, yesterday. Uh, you are more than welcome to reach out to me through the 502-457-2937 text number. And I hope you're doing okay with this. And I will be with you next Thursday at our regular time. And we will then take a look at, well, we'll finish up Schoology. And then we'll start looking at Google Classroom. And by uh, tomorrow, I'll have a Google Classroom section all set up in our Blackboard space for those of you who do not know Google Classroom. And we'll take a look at Google Classroom as a way of doing an online presence. Thank you. Fun being with you.